Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another Multiphonics tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new module for Multiphonics, which is the Low Pass Gate. This borrows some ideas from the world of West Coast synthesis, and it's a pretty fun and easy way to spice up your patch design inside of Multiphonics. So let's dive in and take a look. Here we are in Multiphonics, and to get things started, let's wire up the low-pass gate just to show you how to get sound out of it. So first, let's take the output of the oscillator and run that into the input of the low-pass gate here. Now, if we play a note, nothing's going to happen because we need the gate signal. So we'll take the gate and wire that to the CV input here, then we'll wire the output to the master output, and away we go with some sound. One of the unique things with the low pass gate is the way they're designed and some of their inherent characteristics, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But one thing you'll notice right off the bat is if I simply tap a note, we actually get a natural release to the sound, even though we don't have an envelope attached here. So this is one of the characteristics of a low pass gate, and we're gonna dive into some of these ideas and how we can take advantage of them to make some unique patches. One of the other unique things about the low pass gate and the world of photoresistors in general is that everyone is just a tiny bit different. So let's take a critical listen to the difference in output. Let's take a listen to output one here. And then let's change this for output two. We can see this signal is actually normal because it flows through into input two and passes through to output two. So even if nothing is connected to input two, we can send the signal from input one through the second output. So output two has a fairly short release phase, whereas output one is a lot longer and has kind of a ring to it. With the low pass gate module, we can change the CV level here. And that actually works as a low pass because that's what the low pass gate is. And that's what provides that distinctive round tone to it. With the low pass gate, if we drop the CV level here, you'll hear that there's a very gentle six decibel per octave filter occurring. If we route this through output two and we go through these in series, we actually create a 12 decibel per octave low pass filter. Since the low pass gate module emulates the different characteristics of two different photoresistor circuits, we can actually get some stereo effects by running signal through the low pass gate module in stereo. So we'll take the output and route that into input two and output two over to the right hand side. Now let's drop both of these down to around 65% and we'll hear that there's actually a pretty distinct difference between these two channels. If you can't quite hear that or you're listening in mono, we can simply change this out to listen to output one and change that for output two. So there's a little bit of a difference between these two as we've already demonstrated in a few different ways. Another idea with the low pass gate you can try is using an ADSR or an envelope to drive it, but the response is gonna be different from a traditional VCA because this is a combination of an amplifier and a low pass. So it has a bit of a slur to it and the response isn't quite as linear. One of the other things you might have noticed there is as it completes the decay phase, and because we have a sustained value of zero, it actually just suddenly drops off and it doesn't fall off linearly like a traditional amplifier. With a longer attack phase, you'll also hear the filter begin to open. To demonstrate the difference a little more clearly here, we'll use this same envelope setting to feed a low pass gate and a VCA and listen to the difference in response. Now let's change that out for the amplifier. And there you can hear we have a very smooth linear decay to things and we don't have that sudden fall off. It's also a bit brighter because the low pass gate is a natural filter and doesn't open up quite all the way. One other key difference you might have noticed as well there is during the decay phase of the amplifier, the sound stays continuously bright and still sounds like a saw wave. Whereas with the low pass gate module, as the sound decays, the filter closes and we get a rounder, darker tone. Now, let's get a bit more creative with the low pass gate module by driving it with a sequencer and doing a couple little things along the way. Let's connect the pulse output here to CV input one of the low pass gate and we'll get a sequence. Now this sounds fine, but one other thing we could do is drive this using the ping input here. If we click the button, 
Well, here it just sends a short burst through the low pass gate and we have that natural decay and it rounds off. So let's send the pulse into the ping input here instead. Now, if we play that sequence once more, it's got a bit more groove and bounce to it, but we can take this a few steps further. Because the low pass gate has a few more CV connections, we could do quite a few things to modulate this sequence. We could even manually modulate it by doing something like changing the level CV amount here. So we still get a sequence, but we're also introducing the behavior of a filter. So we can take advantage of this by adding accents to this groove. To add some basic accents here, let's hold down a note to let the sequence run and then connect a few of these steps into the CV input one and CV input two connections because we've got two oscillators running this in stereo. So we've got a little bit of stereo information already because there are small differences between the two channels, but we can accentuate this by accenting one channel and then the other channel. Finally, let's go in and do the CV bias here on step one. Now there's not as much of an accent here because we're not feeding as much CV through. So let's increase this until we can hear that accent. Now by changing these different levels, we can get a much more distinctive accented sequence with slightly different variations in each of these accent pulses. From here, there are tons of different ways you can expand on this idea. To demonstrate this, I've taken the same sequence, but I've also introduced a couple ladder filters, some sample and holds, and an LFO to provide even more modulation. Because we've got the gate sequencer driving the low pass gate and we're adding different pulses, by adding extra filtering and movements, as well as the built-in delay and reverb and multiphonics, we can create a very groovy bouncing sequence using just a handful of simple modules and some basic connections. <laughs> And that's a look at the new low pass gate module inside of Multiphonics. There are lots of different ways you can utilize this to spice up your patches and with a few clever connections or maybe just a few happy accidents along the way, you might find yourself somewhere you never expected to be. For more Multiphonics tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. And for more information on Multiphonics or to try it for yourself today, you can head over to AppliedAcoustics.com. Mm -hmm.